Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. My name is Amanda, and I'm on the sales team at Eagle Eye Networks. Today's webinar topic is a platform demonstration to learn why the world's top brands choose Eagle Eye Networks Cloud VMS. Before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the Zoom Q&A box at any time, and we will address them at the end of this webinar. And just for your awareness, the webinar is being recorded and will be sent to you via email after this presentation. So who is running this webinar today? My name is Amanda Delugopolsky, and I will be your host. During normal times, you'll find me boots on the ground, interacting at trade shows all over the nation, networking with end users from every vertical, including education, cannabis, healthcare, retailers, and property management to discuss their security concerns and, and ultimately improve their day-to-day -day operations. We also have with us today Jody Russell. He's going to be our technical expert on today's webinar, bringing over 16 years of security integration experience as a system installer, manager, service provider, and designer. His experience as an integrator provides, provides a special lens through which to see the challenges inherent in any install and how to provide the best possible solution. So a little bit about Eagle Eye Networks. We're headquartered in Austin, Texas, with offices in three continents and our own proprietary data centers all over the world. We have customers currently spanning across 48 countries. So obviously we are the number one cloud solution. Let's begin breaking the cloud down to a few scenarios most of us can relate to. Do you update your Netflix account? Nope. Is Netflix constantly being upgraded? It sure is. Do you get an alert when any of this happens? Absolutely not, because it's all behind the scenes, which is so convenient for us as users. What about when your online banking account needs an upgrade? No alert there either, because the software is all in the cloud, constantly getting better for us as users. Now let's bring it back a little bit, bring it back to the age of flip phones. Anyone remember that? We carried those little gadgets around in anticipation, waiting months until we could upgrade. And the reason is, we wanted the newest and coolest features. We'd throw the old one in a drawer somewhere and get a new one specifically for an exciting new camera, a new game, keyboard, whatever it may be. And we did this on repeat for years on end. Then, Apple came out and revolutionized the world. Enter the smartphone. The smartphone, smartphone centralized all those cool gadgets and features we loved. Sure, the models improve and we upgrade our hardware, but the experience on the model is constantly improving with cloud updates, offering the best and the newest. Eagle Eye also has a hardware appliance that we rely upon called a bridge. When the smartphone breaks randomly, for example, it's not always possible to go sim simply go to the store, get a new one for free. With our bridge, you can, and more on that in a minute. So heading back to the smartphone analogy, you know, with us, no need to go and grab the latest and greatest smartphone. Smartphone, excuse me. We are camera agnostic, so that means nine out of ten times, your building, in your buildings, we can use and work with those existing camera setups, offering an unbeatable low upfront cost. The cloud ultimately allows our customers to easily monitor and adjust recording length and the retention duration, anywhere from a couple days to five years which determine the cost savings. Pay for only what you need and never for what you don't. Here's a little bit about our, our architecture and kind of how everything moves within our, the cloud and our system. So our VMS has been architected from the ground up to be all cloud all the time. About that bridge I mentioned earlier, Eagle Eye, our VMS requires either a bridge or a CMVR to securely connect to the Eagle Eye cloud. These devices are an integral part of how our unique technology works and include lifetime replacement in the end of hardware failure. No more needing to spend thousands of dollars on a new DVR every you know, X amount of years. We will always be there as long as you have a subscription and, and service with us. The bridge device provides a redundant 24 to 48 hour video storage buffer and utilizes an intelligent bandwidth manager for complete control over how the device impacts your network. We have options for systems with limited bandwidth as well or redundant storage needs. We really do have solutions for you know, really any need. So from here, Jody is gonna now take us through the demonstration of the Eagle Eye Networks VMS platform. 
take it away, Jody. All right. Well, thank you very much, Amanda. I really appreciate uh, everyone that is attending as well. Thank you. So I'm going to jump right into the demo portion of this webinar. Uh, this is going to be a very broad overview. It's going to be uh, hopefully just enough to give you an idea of some of the tools that Eagle Eye Networks makes available to you uh, through our Eagle Eye Networks VMS and the technical aspect of the dashboard and then what the user experience is looking like. So uh, I'm going to be moving through this pretty quickly. And of course, if you have additional questions or want to take a deeper dive into any one certain feature, we are always more than happy to accommodate that. And uh, we can uh, communicate that one-on-one -on -one and set up an additional webinar to cover as, as much of the product as you would like. So in order to see our demo account, first off, I want to point out, you want to go to EEN.com. Go to EEN.com and then in the top right, you'll see login. And if you hover your mouse over login, you'll have two options there. One is for the cloud VMS and one is for the EE camera manager. Camera manager is a different product from the VMS. It is not the, the product that we'll be demoing today. Uh, if you'd like to see a demo on camera manager, please let us know and we can certainly uh, get someone set up to, to provide that demo for you. But for today's purposes, we're talking about the cloud VMS. So you wanna click that link, that's gonna take you to a login page. Once you get to the login page, Login email is demo, D-E-M-O, at E-E-N.com. And the password is better cloud, B-E-T-T-E-R-C-L-O-U-D. Better cloud, all lowercase, all one word. We provide that demo login to whoever would like it. Uh, we make it available all the time from anywhere in the world. One of the benefits of the cloud, of course. And you can utilize that demo to uh, familiarize yourself with the system. And then, of course, if you're on uh, one of our valued uh, resellers, you are absolutely welcome to utilize that demo for your own demo purposes in um, helping to, to give a better idea of what the solution provides to your customers. So we select login, we go to EE Cloud VMS, and that logs us into the demo account. Now this is a live account. This is the Capital Factory, uh, which is a business to business um, incubator or tech, you know, tech incubator, tech startup, uh, co-locating space. And they have offices in Austin, Texas. They have offices in Dallas, Texas. This is a beautiful building and a really cool looking uh, demo, but it is their actual security VMS. So uh, there is, of course, some things that we're not going to be able to fully show off or some setting changes that we wouldn't really be able to make uh, because of the nature of that. So I'm going to select OK here. And now we are looking at the uh, Eagle Eye Networks VMS layout screen. This is the view that the end user will have upon logging into the system. Uh, whereas there's a second view that the reseller would have, which is more of a technical snapshot. That's the dashboard. So a reseller logs into a, one of their customers' accounts to provide some service. They get a nice, easy to access snapshot of the technical summary of the account, whereas uh, the end user, when they log in, they are log in to see their camera system or to access video from their camera system. So they get a really uh, uh, nice looking layouts tab. This layouts tab that we're looking at is completely customizable. So you can select exactly which cameras are presented, what size the cameras are, and then a rotation, if you'd like, of all the different layouts that you may want to put together. This layout tab is also displaying the video streams in low resolution, low frame rate, and we do that on purpose for a couple of different reasons. Uh, for one, it provides a pretty seamless load uh, for the system. So you could imagine you have several high definition cameras running several megapixels of resolution, trying to load all of that video all at once in a very quick and, and seamless loading uh, screen can take just a little bit of time, especially with the high resolution video. So we utilize the low resolution substream uh, to load this initial preview layout. This is not the quality of video that is actually being recorded in the event of motion activity or an analytic or some sort of regional alert. This is simply the low resolution preview stream that we're providing so that the system loads very quickly. As soon as you uh, get into the system, you have access to your video feeds. You can see what's going on within your, within your business. 
And then if you'd like to click into any one of these cameras to see the actual live high resolution true frame rate, it's as simple as just clicking on that camera screen. And now we're loading into this one particular camera, the kitchen, the dining area, we're loading into a live stream, high resolution, true frame rate. Now, normally this, this room's actually really busy with activity and we really like showing off this particular camera. It's not a real high resolution camera, uh, but it's in a great location when there's normal activity occurring throughout the day. And it also has an integrated microphone connected. So uh, we're able to, to record audio through the camera stream as well as listen in to audio live on, on the real time stream. This is the quality of video that you are getting when you need to recall video for forensic surveillance use. So if you want to go back and look at video later, this is the quality you would expect to have, not the substream. Also on the, on the layout screen, when you, when you initially log in as an end user, you see you got a couple of options over here on the left. So you've got your dashboard that's going to jump you into the technical overview. You've got a tags feature. Tags are sort of like if you want to think of something like a keyword search for a, a search engine on the internet, the more keywords that are in a website's metadata, the more likely that particular website is, it's going to pull up first in the, in the search algorithms. So we're sort of using something kind of similar in that we're going to allow you to tag certain identifiers to cameras and those identifiers are completely customizable. Think of it as an easy way to group your cameras for either creating layouts or maybe camera permissions for your users. Especially helpful if you have multiple locations, you could have tags for all of the cameras that are in the city of Austin. You could have tags for all of the cameras that are in the city of Dallas. And then as quickly as just clicking Dallas over on your tags, now you've got a layout screen that has been generated that you did not actually have to create manually camera per camera. Uh, also provides a very easy way to just do a search in the top and anything that's tagged within that particular uh, feed for Austin in this case is going to automatically show up on your layout screen. And then if we scroll down a little bit further, we see our map feature. Very, very popular, very cool, powerful tool. Uh, this allows you to have a, a visual diagram or visual reference point of where the cameras are located, what, they, you know, what they're looking at, what angle field of view they have. We can see that we have a good representation of a visual representation of the camera locations, the field of view. And then also you'll notice the different colored icons. This is a really easy way to get an indication of what the overall camera health status is. So you have cameras that are are turned off. You see you have cameras that are on and working. And you see you have cameras that are not working. And of course, you can click on these cameras and get the preview stream loaded directly from that camera. Elevator lobby, really cool shot there. So this is a really quick and easy way to have a visual representation of your system and then jump right in to that camera should you need to. Uh, and all I did was click that, that graphic in the middle that showed the substream. And now I'm looking at the high resolution real time stream of the camera. We also have a very easy yet really powerful uh, set of permissions and access controls available for your users. So you can control exactly when and how your users are going to be able to access and engage with the system. Uh, if we jump into any one of these non-administrator users, you can get a good example of how much control you have. Here you can select exactly what time these individuals have access down to the day and the hour. So we could actually just change this to exact time that we want these people to be able to log into the system. And then if they attempt to log in outside of that time, then it just simply will alert them that it's uh, not within their authorized window. And then we have a really easy way to select exactly which cameras the individuals have access to and which layouts the individuals have access to. And this gives you the ability to give layouts, which are groups of cameras, to individuals and perhaps add a second camera that you don't need to give them access to the entire layout that camera is in, but, but you just only need the single camera. So you have the ability to, to mix match between cameras and layouts. And then of course our permission sets. So at a glance, it looks like we have just five basic permissions, but in reality, if you drop the Chevron down, there are several subcategories for each one of these. And this is a really easy way to give a uh, sort of a overall, this, this individual needs to have the ability to manage and change settings according to 
everything related to bridges and cameras, then you could just give them the overall privilege, or you can really dive down and customize their privileges uh, precisely to whatever that individual's role is within the, the organization. Now, one of the most important things, obviously, about a video surveillance system is the ability to, uh, to recover video very quickly and easily and share that video uh, easily. So we make that very, very easy. Uh, probably in, in my working experience uh, in the industry, which has been a long time now, this is the easiest that I've seen it. You know, there was a time when, when sharing video was very difficult and required somebody going to a location and pulling data and then going to another location to provide the data. Whereas now we're simply moving data from the cloud to whoever has access and is authorized to, to get that data. So we can go in and look at historical video very, very easily. I'm going to go ahead and just come back to the elevators because that's always a, a good active one. And then we want to look at this freight elevator over here on the right. And we're going to click this clock icon that's indicated at the top right here. So we select that clock icon. This brings us into the historical browser. And the historical browser is designed to make the browsing experience very simple, very intuitive. And then also at the same time, allow you to really dive down, find exactly what you're looking for, and then very quickly share that video if you need to, or save that video, or really cool, be able to archive that video for an indefinite period of time in the Eagle Eye Networks cloud. So on the historical browser, uh, you see down here at the bottom, this is a scrub bar that allows you to pull through different time periods. And we're representing time in, in increments of 10 minutes at this time, but we can go to two hours and we can go to eight hours and then we can really dive down into one minute uh, as well. And you'll notice these blue blocks that are being represented down here on the scrub bar. Those blue blocks represent your high resolution motion activated video events. So it's very easy to scroll through the time when there's nothing happening and find that block of video when there's something interesting that you need to perhaps take a look at. So we have here at 1240, we've got a block of video that has started. We can actually drill down into one minute here. Now we get a better, a better representation of of what that looks like. Uh, the dark blue represents high resolution video. The light blue represents the motion activity which occurred to cause that high resolution video. If you were to press M on your keyboard at this point, now you see that low resolution substring coming in at one image per second. That's represented with this previews tab at the bottom. One of the things we'll point out is that because of the architecture of our system and how we're utilizing that low resolution substream, it allows us to give you low resolution, uh, low frame rate video recorded 24 seven in the cloud. And it's a very low uh, bandwidth requirement for the video because of it low resolution and low frame rate, which means that it's going to the cloud uh, essentially in real time. You know, it is, it's encrypted and, and according to the bandwidth management settings, which we put in place through our intelligent bandwidth manager, we'll have to talk about that in a, in a technical uh, webinar at some point. But because of the way that we have designed the system to utilize both the substream and the high resolution mainstream, it means that no matter what, we're always going to have low resolution video 24 hours, seven day a week in the cloud that is accessible to you if, should you need it. So you don't have to worry about an event occurring or something happening that you lose your, your device or your device is damaged before the high resolution video is moved to the cloud. You know that you have that low resolution substream and you also don't have to worry about an motion event not actually working and not causing your video to record in high resolution, you do at least have always have that low resolution substream. But let's move on to this high resolution video block. So we can press play. And now it's going to start right at the point that we want to play. And then here is the high resolution true frame rate video that we're looking for. And we're playing at a regular speed. We can, of course, slow it down. And then we can speed it up dramatically as well. We can very easily make our own clips. We could just take this whole video clip here, that's the high res video clip, but we can also just hold shift on our keyboard, click to start, push shift again, click to stop. And now we've created our own custom clip. And if we press play, it starts right at the beginning of that clip. And there's the clip. Of course, I'm going a little fast there. Let me maybe slow that down and play it again. 
There we go. Now, we don't know if this is actual or not, or maybe it's not our decision. Maybe we need to uh, simply find the clip and then move it up the chain to someone else that needs to be able to determine whether it's actionable. We have a couple of options for you for that. You could just save the video clip. You could save it in the cloud. You could save it uh, to your local machine, or you can archive it in the cloud for indefinite use. So when you select save over here on the bottom left, all of those options become available to you. So we can choose what type of video. There's that low resolution stream that I was telling you about. You can have them both in a nice little zip file, or you can pull just the H.264. It plays in an MP4 video format, so that's universally playable without additional uh, player or, or software, any kind of download like that. So very nice and handy. And then once you get your parameters set up on your video clip, you have the option to archive it in an archive that can be stored indefinite and shared with people outside of your organization. You also have the ability to download it. When you select download, it doesn't actually download it to your machine at that point. It prepares it, puts it in the download section on the dashboard, and then anyone that has access to this camera and the correct permission sets to be able to view the video, we have the ability to jump in and access that video at any point and download it to their machine. And then lastly, and what I think is extra cool, is we have this copy current location or selection. So when you select this, it copies a link. This link actually right here, copies it to your, to your um, clipboard on your machine. And then that allows you to jump into an email and just simply paste in that email and, or open up a web browser and paste in that web browser. And then you could, you know, in the, in the case of the email, you could share that email with the, the team all they have to do is click that link. And when they click that link, it takes them right back to this page with your clip already put together and they can hit play and then they can decide if they want to download it or archive it. Sharing video and a video surveillance system has never been this easy before. And if you know a technician or if you spent time in the industry yourself on the reseller side, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The ability to create a video clip and share it that e easily, that, that's a fairly new thing and, and I believe unique to Eagle Eye Networks. All right, and lastly, I just wanna take a real quick look at some of the stuff that it's available to your resellers as part of, uh, of the uh, support apparatus that we have in place to provide the best possible solution to your resellers. We go through a lot of training with our resellers. Uh, we're always staying up to date on our product. Because of the continuous delivery nature of our services, that means the product's always being developed, always uh, being enhanced, more, more features are becoming available, new analytics, there's always something new and better that's coming out. And so we spent a lot of our time on the sales engineer team where I'm at, we spent a lot of our time educating our resellers on those features and making sure that they, they know how to implement them and they know how to tweak settings and optimize motion settings, utilize analytics properly, and enable bandwidth management settings. Uh, so I'm not going to go through each one of those obviously today, but I just want to point out a couple of really cool things. First off in our bridge settings, we do have intelligent bandwidth manager. So for you IT uh, teams out there, this is a very nice feature that allows you to control exactly how and, and how much of an impact when and how much of an impact the, the system has on your network. Uh, very important feature there. We provide a lot of really good metrics to the resellers. This allows them to really dive in either with our support team, our engineering team, uh, or with their own solutions team. They can dive into these metrics, really get a feel for how well the system's performing, what sort of uh, response times we're getting, what sort of uh, storage ca capacity and offload data we're receiving. And then that allows us to really kind of optimize the system individually for each person's network in that particular application. Really powerful uh, set of tools here. You can access cameras remotely. You, don't know, you no longer have to be on site with a laptop and a PoE injector plugged into a camera to go up and just change something silly like turning WDR on. Uh, we're gonna allow you to access that camera through a VPN. It's still a secure, uh, secure isolated network on the Camland side util utilizing our camera lockdown feature, but through Eagle Eye Networks and through the cloud and some, you know, sort of uh, networking wizardry, we are able to set up a outbound communication to the cloud, which when initiated, essentially allows us to, to provide these uh, very secure tunnels back and forth to the cameras. So we can access cameras remotely. 
that's an excellent thing for you end users that need good, fast support. The ability for your service provider to jump into the dashboard, access a camera remotely, and make setting changes within that camera GUI uh, is something that's unique to the cloud infrastructure and, and companies that are leveraging that true cloud like, uh, like we are at Eagle Eye Networks. And then finally, the one thing that I really want to, the one, the last thing that I really want to point out is uh, the fact that, you know, you only pay for what you want and what you need with our product. So if you need a camera to record at a certain resolution for a certain amount of days, that's going to cost you a certain amount of money. Whereas if you need a different camera on the same system to record for less days or higher resolution, that is going to uh, allow you to, to customize exactly how much you're paying and you're only paying for what you need. You maybe don't need all of your cameras to record for six months in the cloud, but you certainly need two very important cameras uh, to record in the cloud, like maybe your entry exit points. We support a lot of analytics. So we have five uh, currently, we're always developing more very powerful analytics here that allow you to utilize your VMS system for more than just your traditional video surveillance usage. We start implementing analytics and now we're talking about things that involve business optimization and helping your business learn what its world looks like and then optimize and make more efficient use of that space. So a lot of really cool things happening in the emerging technologies utilizing advanced analytics and machine learning. All right, so that covers the basics of what we wanted to provide in this demo. I uh, hope that it was enjoyable for everyone. I do have just a couple more things that I want to talk about before I turn it uh, back over to Amanda or to the Q&A uh, section of this uh, webinar. So cloud is the answer to the cybersecurity challenges. Uh, at first, the cloud was sort of considered not as secure, and that's probably because of the way that uh, in the security industry we've always sort of dealt with the air gap mentality with traditional on-premises systems that uh, it would have been impossible to access or there was no risk of outside access to video surveillance systems and their components simply because the system wasn't connected to the internet, didn't have a reason to be, didn't leverage the power in the cloud the way that we are. So by design, our system is going to deal with very complex, very large scale uh, systems that have to be accessed in any number of different ways from different places around the world at different times, uh, but still maintain the same scale of comprehensive security that you really need for that type of system. That's only possible through the cloud, through some of the features that we have uh, here, mainly that we're utilizing complete privacy through uh, AES encryption, both in transmission and at rest across our triple redundant data centers. And lastly, before I turn it back over, I just want to talk for a couple of quick seconds about uh, why businesses choose Eagle Eye Networks. So for one thing, broad camera support, you may have an existing system with existing cameras that you've already invested money in. And because you're going to a new emerging technology, you don't have to switch to new different cameras or proprietary cameras. We're going to support well over 3000 network analog and HD over coax cameras. Uh, we have a list found on our website, the camera compatibility chart. If you just go to EEN.com slash cameras. That camera compatibility chart has a very easy to use search filter. You can type in a keyword, you can type in a model, a brand, and it will show you a list of all the known cameras that are already connected somewhere in the world and are up and running. And if that camera is not on that list, you can get in touch with your sales engineer team and we can take a look at that camera specifications and uh, determine whether or not it's a good candidate for support, which we write in real time through the dashboard. Uh, we also offer advanced analytics. That's something that, you know, if you're going to try to uh, leverage advanced analytics or emerging technologies like machine learning, uh, you're going to have to have a, a fairly large investment in the infrastructure required to provide that sort of computational resource demand that those analytics and machine learning and AI are beginning to require. Uh, you're going to get that ability through the cloud. If you're leveraging cloud technology, that means you have shared resource pool uh, that provides you the ability to have the sort of compute power that you need for really advanced analytics and AI without yourself being solely responsible for that uh, infrastructure investment.
We utilize an open API. So that means that uh, we provide our API freely. We create the platform on which the API allows other products and services to build a top. So that means that we can integrate almost seamlessly to most any application out there that wants to integrate to us through our API. If you think about Brevo, that's an excellent uh, cloud access control solution that provides a near seamless integration to Eagle Eye. I say near seamless because you simply, all you need is an email and, a, and just a, a few moments of admin time to, to direct cameras to uh, specific entry points. But uh, in my experience, you know, I haven't seen an access control to video surveillance integration that was easier than Brevo to Eagle Eye Networks. So that is all happening through the API and that API is open and readily available to whomever wants it. And then lastly, security is important and keeping the security secure is very important. So fully encrypted video during transmission and at rest, no open ports or firewall configurations necessary, uh, outbound only communication happening, everything in an AES standard encryption, uh, the video, the data, the metadata, all of that stuff is stored across triple redundant server arrays within our data centers. And then lastly, we're giving you a very, very strong and, and robust set of access control and permissions for user management. So all of these things work together to provide security for your security, which is ultimately uh, the most important part of the whole thing. If your security is not secure, then you really don't have any security at all. So that's a few of the reasons why businesses choose Eagle Eye Networks. I'm going to turn it back over to Amanda at this point. I believe she's got some, some, uh, things that she would like to talk about in regards to, to which businesses are using us or, or how our system can work for certain businesses. Uh, but I really appreciate everyone's time and I hope that uh, you found this useful. We are going to have a Q&A here in just a few moments. So if you have questions, please submit them to the Q&A section within the, the uh, Zoom meeting or if you uh, would like and, and hold those questions until we're ready, you can certainly submit them at that time. But again, my name is Jody Russell with the sales engineer team. Thank you very, very much for your time. And Amanda, it's all yours. Sure, Jody. Thank you so much for all of that. Now, every business has a unique set of challenges they face when it comes to security. Eagle Eye Networks is ready to meet your needs wherever you are with infinite scalability, flexible pricing plans, a wide array of advanced analytics, and an open API platform for unlimited customization. Now, as I mentioned before, we really do work with all the industries. You'll see here retail, you know, salons, multifamily, property management of any sort, commercial property management, shopping malls. We've recently entered the cannabis industry. There's just a lot of regulations there that involve surveillance. Warehouses are a huge, huge industry for us, as well as gymnasiums. We also offer vehicle cams and bridges, um, as well as body cams. So we really can and find a solution that, that meets your needs. As Jody touched on earlier about our open API, here's a few examples of companies that we integrate with. Some of them might look familiar to you just depending on your business and your industry. And the, lim the, the list here is, is large, but here are a few uh, a couple big ones here. Brevo and Swift Sensors, you'll see the top two are actually our sister companies. And Brevo is the biggest player in the access control industry and Swift Sensors, you'll find You'll find that software mostly in quick serve restaurants and those environments. So from here, we're going to turn it over for questions and see what we have sitting and waiting for us in the Q&A from the attendees. So we have some great questions that popped into the Q&A. Thank you, Jody, for such a great demo and overview. Um, let's see. The first one we, I have here is from Anthony. So he wanted a clarification again between the NVR and this, I'm sorry, NVR and the CMVR. Um, looks like we might want to clarify that. Okay. So he wants, um, he wants some clarifications between the bridge and the CMVR. Did I understand that correctly? Yes. Yes. Right. That's always a good question. And we have, a, we actually have uh, several webinars on, on that exact topic because it does come up quite a bit. So, uh, you know, architecturally speaking, they're not any different. The way that the system works, the, the components within the system, um, the way that you access the system and what you expect to get from it, all completely the same. The biggest difference that you're looking at, uh, and I'll go ahead and show you one here on, on the demo account, 
instead of having just a buffer capacity of maybe a terabyte, like what we have with our bridge devices, uh, depending on the model, you can go all the way up to 55 terabytes on our, on our enterprise uh, CMVR 820 model. Uh, they can handle l larger camera loads as well. But if we scroll down and we look at, here is a BR420, and this is actually in Dallas, so that kind of um, is a feature that I may have missed. The, the, the platform that we provide allows for multi-site locations uh, to, be con to be added into one single point of interface very easily, which means that if you have a, a business that has uh, retail stores, for example, all over the state of Texas or, or perhaps even the southeast or, or northeast of the country, you have all of those stores all at one single point of content, one single point of interface, and you're not logging into multiple machines. Uh, but I don't want to divert too, too far away from what we were talking about with, with this question. So this is a 420. That is a CMVR, Cloud Managed Video Recorder. You see it looks exactly the same on the system. Uh, it's just looking like a different model number. When we jump into the bridge settings and we look at our metrics tab, here's where the really the biggest difference is. And that is in the storage capacity on the device. So this is going to allow you to have a device that if you need long-term local storage, you may have some sort of government uh, requirement that says you have to have local video stored for a certain amount of days and you have to have cloud backup or cloud retention as a redundant uh, storage capacity. You're, you're able to do both of those. It also works very well in solutions that don't have the best uh, bandwidth. So if you don't have adequate bandwidth to, to stream, high resolution video to the cloud in almost real time, you can utilize a CMVR, pay for the M10 plan, and now the bandwidth isn't being utilized because the video stays locally. And the only time that you have to pull video up to the cloud is when you're accessing it through the bridge. And usually that's one camera at a time, so it's not nearly as bandwidth uh, intensive. Uh, and then secondly, you have the ability to, to sort of set what we might consider like a trickle effect. So uh, there may not be enough bandwidth to get the video to the cloud in real time, but we can certainly have the video trickling to the cloud and we still don't worry about losing it because there's enough capacity built into the CMVR storage that means that we can sit there and build up that video locally and when it gets off to the cloud, then we can remove it. Uh, so it gives you a lot of options. And then of course the M10 plan, that's, that's a, uh, very popular because of the, the lowest, the, you know, the lower cost subscription. Good question. Uh, sorry, I had to, no I had to, I had to unmute hey. myself there. All right. So great. Thank you for answering that. So we have actually a couple more good questions here. Um, let's get a quick one in real quick there. Uh, we have Gerald asking, is there an app and can you handle all of the mentioned features in the app? Yes, that's, that's a, also a really good question and a really, really cool feature. And uh, I want to answer this question with just a really quick story uh, before I do. So I used to work on the reseller side. I was working for uh, an integrator here in Austin, Texas, uh, when Eagle Eyed Networks was first um, getting onto the scene for the VSAS market. And we became one of their early resellers. At that point in, in my career, I was in uh, upper management and I had a team underneath me that would go and, and do installs. And, and of course, they're usually the ones that I reach out to and say, is this product any good? Uh, and it was an overwhelming yes when I asked that question to my teams because they were going out in the field and they weren't even getting a laptop out of their truck. They were setting up an entire system and having it up and running even training the end user completely with the mobile application. So we have iOS uh, and Android mobile applications. You can access them on an iPad. Uh, and yes, all of the tools that you see available are available to you through the mobile application. So you can do complete installs, complete management. You can access your historical video. You can set up your motion alerts. You can utilize the analytics and configure the analytics. Uh, our new fisheye uh, client cloud dewarping uh, feature is available on the on the phones, very seamless and smooth. Uh, so the answer to the question is yes, and, it, and it's a really cool experience, especially if you've been in the industry or if you have a lot of experience with video surveillance systems as as a user. Uh, we've been locked to a machine for a long, long time, and everybody has been saying for a while this this system is great, but man, if I could just walk around 
and access the video anytime I want it on my cell phone or on my iPad and just peek in, especially like now with, uh, with the pandemic, you know, a lot of business owners are really, they're, they're reaching back out to us and just saying, thank you. This is so great because I'm, I'm stuck at home, but I can jump in on my iPad at any moment and I can just take a peek around my business and I can just make sure things are okay. And it gives me such peace of mind. Uh, so the ability to access that stuff on your mobile device is, is fairly new, very powerful. And because of our cybersecurity considerations, the background that our company founder and owner has in cybersecurity, uh, we're making sure that we're providing that connectivity without risking uh, some sort of, of security uh, threat to your network. So we're doing everything through outbound transmissions only. We don't require any special firewall configurations. And that includes the ability to access the system from your mobile device. Because in reality, and the best part about all of this, you're not accessing your system on, on, your, on your site. You're accessing your system in the cloud. And that means you can access it from anywhere at any time. Perfect. All right. So how many cameras can be viewed at one time? Well, it depends on how you want to look at them. So if you've got your layout screen opened up, uh, we're going to allow up to six cameras across uh, horizontally, and then you can just keep scrolling into oblivion. Uh, if you've got that many cameras on, you can just keep scrolling down the page and it'll keep loading them. <laughs> Excuse me. We do only allow for one live view at a time when you're accessing through the VMS dashboard. And that's because of the bandwidth for one. And then also the, uh, the pulling of H.264 video encoding and then trying to present that on your workstation can be a little bit of a load on your processor if, if you're trying to do several cameras at once. Now, we do give you the ability through the historical browser to have multiple cameras open and then they actually sync together so that as you're driving through the view of one camera, the other cameras that you have open on your screen in the historical browser are following along in sync with that, that driving that you're doing on that one camera. Got it. Got it. Okay. Let's see. We have another question here from Richard. Do you guys provide any types of, any type of limitation expectations we can use when addressing bandwidth concerns with any potential customers if we're reselling Eagle Eye? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the most important resources that you have uh, when you become a partner with Eagle Eye Networks is your sales engineer team. I'm a member of the sales engineer team. Uh, we essentially work for our resellers. We're your pre-sales design team. So we provide you with a lot of different um, a lot of different uh, shareable literature or uh, the way the methodology of calculating bandwidth. We give you uh, limitation considerations customized to specific projects based off of camera load, camera resolution, uh, the, the total scope of the build of the system. So how many bridges do, do you have connected on this circuit? How many cameras are on each one of those bridges? What cameras, you know, what, what, what resolution are we recording on these cameras? And then we provide those calculations to you. We also provide uh, a private link as a reseller. It's a private link to a, to a tool that allows you to do a system build and will give you the exact parameters that you need to address with, say, your bandwidth uh, considerations. Excellent. Cool. And it looks like we have time for one more question. Let's see. Do the cameras need to be powered or are they wireless and can they be mounted outside? Yeah, good question. Uh, so the cameras do need to be powered um, that we have some cameras that are working off of battery power and are wireless. Uh, if you go to EEN.com slash cameras, or just go to EEN.com and then under the support section, you'll find camera compatibility. That's a list of well over the 3,000 plus different uh, camera models that we support across, I think at this point, 60 different camera manufacturers. And you can find the camera that you're looking for. You can type in Wi-Fi in the search filter that appears there and it will, it will filter out uh, all of the cameras with the exception of the cameras that are capable of, of providing a Wi-Fi connection to the network. Um, we 
provide network switches through Eagle Eye Networks. We have our own switch that is managed through the dashboard. It is a PoE switch that allows you to manage the power components of your cameras. So you can turn cameras on and off. You can reset them. You can see exactly which cameras are plugged into which networks, which if you're on the on the service side or have history with uh, doing VSAS service, that can be a, a nightmare sometimes when, when people aren't labeling uh, camera cables. Uh, we allow you to open up your phone and just look in there real quickly and say, oh, that, that camera's attached to port three and port three is not pulling power. Let me reset it first and see if that fixes the problem. And then if it doesn't, we jump to the three C's and we start working our service. Good question. Excellent, excellent. So everybody, those are all the questions we will take for now. And if uh, for some reason we didn't get to answer, I know there were a few I didn't get to directly. As long as you provided me your email, I'm, ha I'm gonna shoot those answers over to you today or tomorrow at the absolute latest. Um, if you have any remaining questions for everyone, please, please reach out via phone or email. You have all of the information on the screen uh, portraying right there. We have our number, we have our email. We're all, we're all willing and able to uh, answer those questions immediately. Be sure to check your email where we'll be sending out this recorded webinar and more information after this. Again, thanks so much, Jody, for being our presenter today. Thanks for everyone for participating and for your patience with our, our little difficulties we had there in the beginning there. But uh, everyone here at Eagle Eye hopes your team is staying healthy and we look forward to hearing from you very soon. Thank you guys thank so much. Have a good day. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, everyone.